Okay, here's the where it kind of gets tricky. You have a triangle, and we know it's a 45, 45, 90 because of this. And what they give you is, let's say, the hypotenuse is 10. And you want to find the side length. All right? You want to find the side length. So again, it's a 45, 45, 90. So what we do here is we have set, let's, let's, there's two ways of looking at it. We can either set up Pythagorean theorem where we have x squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. Or let's try here to use, so again, we know this is x because they are isosceles, right? So let's try here to use the concept of the 45, 45, 90. I said earlier you're kind of pasting on the rad 2. Well, really what you're doing to get from your side length to the hypotenuse is what? You're not pasting on the rad 2, you're multiplying by rad 2. So if I want to go backwards, if I want to reverse that process, what will I have to do? I'll have to divide by rad 2, right? Because that's the opposite of multiplying by rad 2. So if I want to do that, I'm going to start with 10, and then I'm going to divide by rad 2, right? Or in other words, I don't know why I just wrote it with the division symbol. I, in fact, don't like that because I'm not a third grader. Um, I'm going to write 10 over rad 2. But again, remember from algebra, in order to solve this problem, um, we can't leave our answer like this because mathematicians hate when there's a radical in the denominator. So we need to rationalize this, right? We need to rationalize this. How we do that, we multiply top and bottom by the radical that's there, right? And what that will do is it will eliminate, that didn't work, it will eliminate the radical in my denominator. Okay, so which we don't want. So my numerator turns into what? 10 rad 2, because it's just 10 times rad 2. And my denominator, rad 2 times rad 2, is just 2. So here we end up with what? Can we leave it like that? No, because the 10 and the 2 simplify to 5 and 1, leaving us with 5 rad 2. Now, how does this connect with our original problem? My side lengths are both 5 rad 2, right? My side lengths are both 5 rad 2. How does this connect? Instead of doing all of this work, dividing by rad 2, an acceptable way of doing it, how do the 10 and the 5 connect? If you can just divide, if the hypotenuse does not have a rad 2 in it, you can divide your number by 2 and then slap on the rad 2, right? So I started with 10, I ended up with 5 with a rad 2 connected to it, right? So you're cutting it in half and multiplying by rad 2, basically, okay? Again, if you don't want to remember that trick, there's several options. You can just divide by rad 2, as we did over here, right? You can do this work here, or you can set up the Pythagorean theorem where you had x squared plus x squared equals 10 squared. Those are all options for you, okay? So that's, that's kind of the setup for the 45, 45, 90. You shouldn't see any trickier problems than that, necessarily. Um, but let's look at the other type of special right triangle. The other type of special right triangle is called the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay? So again, this is just telling you the angle measures. We know this is 90. One of these angles is 30. One of these angles is 60. Okay? All right. All right. So we have a 30, 60, 90. Now... If it were, if we were to decide which one of these would be 30, which one would be 60, right? Um, as we discussed, I believe in chapter 6, um, the, the side that is opposite the smaller angle must be um, the smaller side. So this side here, I'm going to highlight it, this side here is the smallest of my two legs, which means it must be opposite opposite the smallest angle, which means this angle here must be our 30. Do you follow that? So again, this 30 degree angle here is my smaller angle because it's opposite my smaller side. Similarly, my bigger side 
um, my bigger side here, sorry, technical difficulties, my bigger side here is opposite my bigger angle, which must be 60 degrees, okay? So that's one way, if they don't tell you the degree measure, assuming it's drawn to scale, of course, that's one way to at least kind of eyeball which one it should be, okay? So if we have a 30, 60, 90, Here's the relationship. We're going to start with my smallest side, which again is the yellow highlighted. We're going to start with that side. We're going to call it X. Okay. The relationship here is that the hypotenuse is twice the size of X. So if I know my short leg is 4, then my hypotenuse must be 8. Right? If I know my short leg is 10, my hypotenuse must be 20. Okay? So that's to get from the short leg to the hypotenuse, you just multiply by 2. Okay? Now, to get from the short leg, again, that's, that's, this is our starting point. This x is our starting point for this type of a um, triangle. The other relationship it has is that the long leg is just the short leg times rad 3. It's just the short leg times rad 3. Now, if you don't believe me, you can prove it. How would you prove that? How would we prove that this, at least, is a right triangle? Well, if a squared plus b squared equals c squared, then this must be a right triangle, right? So let's check it. We'll say that this is x squared plus x rad 3 squared equals, what's my hypotenuse? 2x squared. And x squared can't do anything to that. x rad 3 squared is just x rad 3 times x rad 3, which I'll do on the side here. x rad 3 times x rad 3. The x times x gives us x squared, right? And the rad 3 times the rad 3 gives us 3. So this is plus 3x squared equals 2x times 2x, which is 4x squared. Is that true? Well, yeah, we have 4x squared on this side equals 4x squared on this side, which means it must be a right triangle. Okay? Um, so let's look at an example. If you have a triangle like so, and they tell you, it's a right triangle. They tell you again this one would be 60 because it's opposite the bigger side. Um, they tell you this is 60. If they just start you off with 4, this is my short leg because it's opposite the 30, right? It's opposite the 30. So if they just start you off with 4, to get to my hypotenuse, all you do is double it. You get 2 times 4, which is 8. It's that simple. To get to my long leg, I multiply by rad 3, which just gives me 4 rad 3, and you're done. Okay? And you're done. It's that straightforward when they give you the short leg. Where it gets tricky is when they give you the long leg. Okay? Or when they give you the hypotenuse. So we'll look at one of each of those. Okay? I just realized I forgot to number my examples. I think this is example 5 now. So, if we have a 30, 60, 90, and we know this is 30, and they start you off with, um, let's say, 9. They give us the long leg, which is 9. We know it's the long leg because it's opposite the 60. Now, we're going backwards, so instead, if we usually if we start here, to get to 9, you multiply by rad 3, right? So to do opposite that, we'd have to do what? To go from 9 to the short leg, you'd have to divide by rad 3, right? So we get 9 over rad 3. Again, rationalize the denominator. Times rad 3 over rad 3. You end up with 9 rad 3 over 3, which is just 3 rad 3. So that's this side length here, 3 rad 3. And now that we know the short leg, we can double it to get to the hypotenuse. So my, hot, my, my hypotenuse would just be 3 rad 3 times 2, which is 6 rad 3.
and you're done. Okay. Um, we'll do one more. We'll do one more. Oh, there's a bell ringing. That must mean I'm at school. <laughs> um, okay, so this last one. My kids outside are waiting. That's okay, though. This last one we'll have. We'll start with a hypotenuse of 8. Now, to get to the short leg, again, reversing this process, to get to the short leg, instead of multiplying by rad 2, we now, I mean, not rad 2, I'm sorry, instead of multiplying by 2, we now divide by 2, and we get 4. Again, assuming this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, so we get 8 to 4, and then to get from the short leg to the long leg, we get what? 4 times rad 3, which is just 4 rad 3. I forgot to number this again. This is example 6. Okay? So we're going to look at more problems in class tomorrow, um, but I want you to take notes on this, obviously. Um, and the, the uh, random question um, is going to be, where did Mr. Kranz propose to his wife? And the answer is, Laguna Beach. Where did Mr. Kranz propose to his wife? Laguna Beach. See you in class.